Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here. We're back for part four of my Windows 10 ARM Edition virtualization at Apple Silicon Max. I went over on part one how to get it working with QEMU. Part two was getting it working with ACVM application. And part three was getting it to work with UTM. Now, we need to figure out how to get internet working, networking, and file sharing so we can actually get some work done. Let's jump in and get started. Now that we have our main virtual machine or VHDX file and we've got our ISO driver here, we can click start to get the virtual machine going. Remember, we gotta go in there and we gotta change our resolution. So click inside and hit escape. We'll go down to the device manager, go down to the platform configuration. Again, we went over this in the last video, but I wanted to make sure that if you're just watching this video, how to change that resolution. So now we gotta go click enter here and now we can click on 1024 by 768. We'll hit escape. We'll hit yes to save the settings. We'll go down to hit escape again. Now we'll go down with the arrow button down to reset. And we've got our new resolution here where we can see a little bit better. It's gonna boot us right into the operating system here. This thing actually boots surprisingly fast. It's really nice. We'll log in here. Now that we're in the operating system, we should be able to click on File Explorer and we should be able to see our mounted CD drive. Look at that. And there's our files. All we need to do is click on this guy right here, right click on it and hit install. It is gonna ask us if we want to install the device driver. Yes, we do. We'll give it a second here. And before you know it, the internet will be set up. Let's see if it works. We'll go to the device manager. And it should be set up here, the network adapters. And there it is. Ethernet adapter is installed. We should be good to go here. Let's close this window and let's try out Internet Explorer to make sure everything's working properly. And look at this. Let's open up a new tab here. We'll go to Mr. Macintosh. And here we go. Look at this. We are working on the internet. That's step one. It's great now that we have the internet working. As you can see, I had some pages here that I was testing out from before. I was running Geekbench. I was doing some other things, making sure to test it. I was testing out YouTube, seeing how the performance was. It actually works very well. We need to be able to transfer files between the VM and your Mac. There's a couple options that we can do. Now let's shut this down first and I wanna show you that. And I was having some trouble with the UTM to be able to get that to work. There's no real options in ACVM right now to be able to do that, but I'll show you the options in UTM. Then we'll go and click here, edit. And then we go over to the sharing part. Now this is where UTM allows you to share a directory, but you need to install the Spice Guest tools. And I had a bunch of problems trying to do that. I'm not saying that we can't get this to figure work, but I'm gonna show you a super easy way to get this to work. So let's hit cancel on this. We're going to set up file sharing on the Mac first, and we'll be able to use Windows to navigate to the Mac and easily share files between the VM. All we need to do is go into the system preferences. We'll go on sharing. We'll click on file sharing here and turn it on. You can click any folder that you want to be able to share here. I wanted to do user shared, so that's why I added this folder. I just clicked add, and you can add any folder you want, but I added user shared. And then we have to go into the options here and then share files and folders using SMB. And then we need to turn on the user account that we want to be able to use to be able to transfer the files. So we'll click on OK on that. We'll have the check mark done. And that's it for the Mac side of file sharing. Now let's start the VM and we will go in there and we'll edit. Back in booted with ACVM. And when we scroll down here, that you can see that the text doesn't kind of get messed up. And when we go into the start menu, the text loads kind of properly more with a better flow. Again, all these settings can be changed with the different versions of the GUI app. All we need to do is put in a request. So if, we, if we're seeing a performance issue, we can put in an issue with the GitHub page and we can maybe get this fixed. 
Again, I like UTM and I also like ACVM. Use the one that you like the most. And as time goes, all these versions are going to be completely modified and the settings are going to be fixed at each step of the way to make them better and more reliable and performance oriented. Again, we're only days or, or barely a week and a half into getting this all even working in the first place. So by the time you're watching this, the version that you download might be all fixed with all these and you might not even notice these problems anymore. So now that we have internet working, we've got file sharing working, you can start downloading and doing anything that you want to do in here. You can, like I said, I was just running a Geekbench test to show the performance and it really ran great. Uh, the performance numbers came back. They looked really good. They matched up with some of the reported results that Martin Noble put together because he was the one that originally put together this video. And it was really nice to be able to see all the performance gains that you could get compared to even this running on a Microsoft device. Here's the Geekbench tryout here and we can run the CPU benchmark. You can see that we're running four processors and four cores and we've got four gigabytes of RAM. So we can run this and it takes a little bit of time and I'll show you the results here in a second. All right, our Geekbench 5 score finish. We got a 1462 on a single core and a 4647 on the multi-core. And these are pretty close to what others were getting. I think we were getting around 1500 on the single core and around 5000 on the multi-core. So we could go in there and mess around with some of the settings to see if we can bump that up again. But that's it for the Windows 10 on Apple Silicon with the ARM edition. Do you guys want to see Ubuntu next? Is there anything that I missed and you wanted to dive a little bit deeper? Let me know in the comments. I hope this video created value for you and you're trying it out and getting it working. If you like this video, consider clicking that like button and the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, I really appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.